Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. My name is Mike Riley, the founder and editor of the Journalist Toolbox. Today, we're going to explore prompt writing for AI, uh, which is a good skill to have. And there are some uh, best practices we can follow that we're going to go through in just a minute. But before we get started, I want to talk about the website journalisttoolbox.ai. Uh, this site uh, has been around since uh, June of 2023. Um, it has all kinds of different resources in here, links, training videos. We have a newsletter that comes out every other Tuesday morning. Uh, and you can go in here and open up any of these. Uh, this one happens to be on data tools. Uh, we have a page on prompt writing as well. And you can see links uh, to all kinds of different resources, training videos embedded in here, uh, all kinds of useful resources, some free, some paid uh, sites, usually on uh, each one, uh, whether or not you have to pay for it or not. Here's the prompt writing page here. Uh, this video will appear on this page when I have it finished and posted, uh, but all kinds of different uh, prompt writing websites, engineering guides. We're going to talk about a few of them here in a little bit. Um, so anyway, take advantage of this website. It's free. Uh, right here on the right rail, we have a newsletter. Um, so if you click on that, you can subscribe to our sub stack. Uh, it comes out every other Tuesday. Uh, usually hits uh, right around 7, 8 a.m. Uh, uh, Eastern time. Uh, and has all kinds of cool little tips and tricks in it, uh, links to videos uh, and, and all kinds of uh, little uh, uh, nuggets about what's going on in the AI and journalism industries. Uh, take advantage of, a, of it. Again, it's free, although you can donate uh, if you want to. We always appreciate that. Um, but uh, you get the, the base, uh, 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 base newsletter for free, basically. Um, we have training videos of which you're watching one right now. If you click on this link here, uh, you'll, it'll take you to our YouTube page, which you can subscribe to for free. Uh, and we've got more than 100 training videos up here. Um, there's, uh, you know, all kinds of different topics, AI tools, uh, Google tools, uh, apps on your phone to edit video and audio, all kinds of really cool stuff. You know, a lot of data uh, storytelling tools, too, because uh, I teach a lot of data journalism courses. So, again, take care, advantage of all of these uh, uh, free resources available, available at journalisttoolbox.ai. All right, let's get into prompt writing a little bit. And uh, I've got a little slideshow. I'm going to play some tips. Um, it'll, they're also available, the tips, uh, on this little prompt writing handout uh, that I'm going to have you guys download as well. If you want to hit pause, you can go ahead and open up this handout. Uh, it's HTTPS uh, colon slash slash bit.ly bit.ly slash prompts 101. So hit pause and go ahead and open up that guide just so you have it handy. All right, welcome back. Uh, you should now have the prompt uh, handout uh, open. Uh, if you wanna make a copy of this, feel free. You can just go to make a copy or to download right here if you wanna download it as a Word doc or God forbid a PDF. I'm not a big PDF fan. Uh, but anyway, whatever format you want it in, uh, you're welcome to it. Um, so let's get into the slideshow real quick. I've got a few uh, uh, tips up front here that I wanted to talk about, uh, and then we'll get into the, the prompt writing tips. But uh, I just wanted to talk about some, some cautionary things with using artificial intelligence uh, in a journalistic way. There's some things we should always think about before we uh, actually jump in uh, head first uh, with uh, uh, using artificial intelligence in, in journalism. So uh, let's get started. Um, I've written a couple books, uh, The Journalist Toolbox Handbook, uh, Data Plus Journalism, both are available on Rutledge.com. Uh, the Journal's Toolbox one might be of interest to you. It's got a lot of prompt writing uh, resources in it. Uh, and it's out on Rutledge uh, in January 2024. So uh, you can order them at Rutledge.com. Anyway, um, best practices with uh, uh, human-centric journalism. Uh, this comes from the Associated Press Guidelines, uh, where they talk about what's called the 80-20 rule. Um, if AI is producing 80% of your project or your uh, uh, whatever you're developing, there needs to be 20% on the back end that's quality control. That means an editor fact checking, uh, cleaning up, uh, you know, spelling, grammar, and so on, uh, and uh, just making sure uh, that it's good quality journalism. Um, you know, typically we're not asking uh, AI to write a story for us or to really write much of anything, but it can be helpful in research. Uh, it can be helpful in editing. You know, headlines, uh, uh, you know, proofreading, even AP style. Um, but always look at uh, any output from a generative AI tool as unvetted source material. Um, use that editorial judgment that we've been trained on uh, as journalists 
uh, and uphold our, our journalistic standards when we're considering using anything produced by AI for publication. I think that's just a good overall guideline to follow uh, when you're producing uh, anything using AI and disclose it uh, as well, uh, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, some of the problems with uh, using AI for writing, Sports Illustrated got in hot water about this, uh, a few other uh, news outlets. This one comes from Microsoft Network, msn.com. Uh, they used it to write an obit uh, on a, a former NBA basketball player that died. And as you can see from the headline, it's very, just very like, poorly done. And, you know, the, the, the story, the lead of the story, you know, had uh, some bad information in it. Um, you know, don't ask it to write because you're going to get results like this and then you're going to get made fun of uh, on social media for doing something foolish like this. Uh, you know, a picture of a basketball hoop, you know, with an obituary and you know, that's just uh, not tasteful. The headlines, horrible. Um, read anything that AI generates very, very closely. And again, don't ask it to write an article. Um, disclosing AI to your audience. Um, if you disclose, typically it's going to be through an editor's note at the start or as a footnote at the end of the story, you know, maybe used AI to write a headline or to do research. Typically, you're going to put that in your story um, at, at the beginning or the end. Um, keep in mind, your, your publication may have their own policies on how to handle that. Uh, one of the examples here I really like from this University of Nebraska student who, uh, who took an AI course uh, with Matt Waite. Uh, she uh, actually does her uh, Dolly created uh, artwork here. Art direction by her, I uh, gave her name, and then slash art by Dolly3. I think that's a really good way to do it. it tells the reader, hey, you know, I used AI to produce uh, this nice little uh, graphic here that ran with her uh, blog post. Um, so, you know, make sure it's clear to the reader uh, that it's a photo illustration uh, and uh, that you uh, help use the AI to help produce uh, uh, the uh, article. Okay. On to writing prompts, which is what we're all here for. Um, start by simplifying. Um, a lot of times uh, when we run into hallucinations or problems with AI outputs, uh, if we're asking, you know, uh, chat GPT or Bard or Claude uh, to uh, produce something for us is typically because we've asked it up front to do too many things for us and it gets confused and that's when it begins to hallucinate or uh, provide, you know, bad information. Um, so ask it to simplify. If you, you have a complex task, break it down into smaller steps. Use kind of that chain of thought uh, approach. We call it step-by-step -step prompting. Um, give uh, training examples uh, yeah, with, uh, you know, help with any new or, or any complex tasks. You know, here's an example of this. Um, edit this story to uh, be similar to this. Um, add any relevant or contextual information whenever possible. Uh, and repeat the main instructions at the end if need be. Sometimes it'll catch some of its own mistakes. Um, uh, and use any words or phrases that you think might guide the process. My background's in, in data journalism, and we have this saying, garbage in, garbage out, meaning if you put bad data into a graphic making software, you're going to get bad results. Um, you know, better prompts generate better results. Same thing here. You know, if you write a good prompt, you're going to get a more specific, uh, 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 clear and useful result. Um, use clear punctuation headings, uh, section markers when possible, especially if it's a longer piece of text. Um, specify the output structure you want. And when we open up ChatGPT in a little bit, I'm going to show you what you can do in ChatGPT to kind of program it, or at least in GPT-4. Uh, to program it, uh, you know, uh, to what, how you want it to put information out. Do I want it in bullet points or I want it to be very clear and concise, you know. Uh, give it any formats or, you know, uh, versions of software. You know, if you're working with uh, mid-journey, you might tell it what lenses to use or, you know, what uh, 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 type of uh, 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 image you want generated. Um, be very specific. Um, you can even do camera lenses. I want this uh, image to be produced uh, as though it was shot with a, you know, a Nikon FG20 uh, 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 camera. And it will produce results very similar to what you would see with a, Nikon FG20. You can also use tools like Prompt Perfect, which I have a photo of here on the right. Uh, it's a plugin uh, that'll help polish any prompt you write. You can load the prompt in there and it'll uh, uh, tell you, hey, you know, I think you should do rephrase it this way. So it gives you a little editing, a little critique of, of your work. It's not perfect, uh, but, you know, it's helped me along the way a few times. Um, and always be crystal clear. Um, this came up in a training I was doing 
uh, with a, a bunch of business publications last summer. Uh, one of the editors, uh, we, we had kind of an open forum at the end of the session. And, uh, he goes, uh, uh, use AI uh, prompts like you're you're giving directions to a lost tourist or a new intern. Be very specific uh, and you'll uh, be a little less likely to end up with a wacky answer. You know, be specific and be very clear, you know, much like you'd explain something to a new intern. I thought that was, you know, sage advice. And I've just kind of seen that, uh, you know, pop up from time to time when I'm writing my own prompts, uh, you know, or rewriting my own prompts when I don't do a good job of writing and don't get the result I want. Um, another step, uh, provide uh, reference text, uh, yeah, include any reference materials, uh, especially on lesser known topics. You know, if you're writing about uh, some obscure topic, uh, you know, maybe give it a link uh, or, or some uh, background text uh, to consider. Um, allow it time to think. Um, you know, ask AI sometimes at the end to uh, explain its thought process um, on that topic or on that prompt. Um, uh, use any external tools, uh, coding engines, uh, you know, uh, for any tasks that need, you know, calculations or special knowledge. Um, retest things, um, you know, keep challenging it um, uh, and to go over and over and over to, to try and uh, produce a better answer. Hit that regenerate button at the end uh, a lot of times. That, that's helpful as well. Um, and number 16, which is a really big one, and I, I've been using this one quite a bit when we get into the practice prompts in a minute. I'll show you a few of them. Assign it a role. Um, you know, I am a reporter, a medical reporter uh, for a, a national publication in the U.S. Um, uh, give me five good, give me five good links uh, to research uh, sports concussions or CTE or whatever. Um, be specific about your role. You know, it can be a role of a you know, doctor, lawyer, whatever. Um, I'm mean, going to give you the example down below here. Yeah. So uh, a lot of these tips um, uh, come from the OpenAI Prompt Engineering Guide, which is on our handout. I've got it linked at the bottom here. Uh, you can see it to the right. Uh, it's a little screen grab from the Prompt Engineering Guide, which does a really good job of giving you some basic, uh, uh, what we call base prompts uh, that you can use uh, to modify and, and get what you want. And, and just a, a, you know, a lot of uh, really good tips as well. Um, this is what I was talking about earlier, this little graphic here, uh, when I was talking about uh, breaking down uh, the steps of simple, simplifying the steps. Um, when you're starting to think through writing a prompt, um, you're walking through this, this uh, uh, kind of grade uh, framework. Um, so you start with a goal. I want to write some email responses to clients. Uh, the request uh, is you're responding to their questions about pricing, okay? How do I draft that email? Uh, the action, you're going to drop in a text file, maybe that covers all of your standard rates and things, um, and then ask AI to explain our standard rates uh, and any discounts that would apply, okay? Um, uh, uh, the details, you know, you can ask it the, the second prompt, assess the client's clients uh, quest first, um, uh, and then what service they're asking for, uh, the, the price request. Um, and then, you know, uh, you start to get your results and your exa examples of, of what you would get from that. So think about what do I need? You know, what specifically do I need? Then how do I write that prompt and provide it enough information to produce that result? Okay, that uh, result. My credits are here. Um, uh, Joanne de Titus uh, at the Center for Cooperative Media has been a big contributor to many of my uh, trainings over the years. So is Amy uh, Reinhardt uh, at AP, AP. She oversees their local news AI initiative there. Uh, so Hamilton, too, who's really great. Uh, he does a night open online course on AI. Uh, a few others here uh, as well. But those are the, are the people and uh, places and things They've contributed to my trainings over, over the, the last few years with uh, with AI. So let's go to the handout. Again, that's available at HTTPS bit.ly uh, slash prompts 101. Um, and I'll just walk you through the handout real quick, and then uh, we'll jump in and, and play around with some of the prompts and the software. You can kind of see what we do with it. Um, up here at the top, I've got a lot of the journal's toolbox, uh, training videos, newsletter, and so on. Um, and then a little introduction on AI. Um, and then the resources, the Beginner's Prompt Handbook that Joanne Titus wrote, 
prompt engineering guide, AP uh, uh, Associated Press uh, AI guidelines, uh, a few other training videos, things like that. But down here we have, I think not, it's nine now prompt exercises um, uh, on how to train ChatGPT to understand your needs. Um, we've got uh, others in here on uh, using BARD and some prompts you can experiment with. Um, uh, different, uh, you know, things you can do with Claude, uh, which is really nice because you can you can now upload a lot of documents into these uh, different uh, uh, tools. Um, Bard will allow it. Claude will take up to seventy five thousand words in a document, um, and you know, I give you some base prompts to work with here. Um, and uh, um, editing, uh, it's very good. I give you a few editing tools, but also you know. Uh, practice story that you can go in, lo load into Claude or any of, the, any of these tools and ask it to do some editing on. Um, it's really good. It's good at, with AP style, grammar, punctuation. The one thing I always ask it to do in my prompts is list the changes you made in, as a in bullet point list at the end of uh, the edits. So uh, I can see all the uh, specific things that it did. Um, Mid-journey prompts. I've got a lot of prompts down here that will create different types of graphics, even design websites for you. And you can use these base prompts really for anything. I use some of these as my little icons on uh, Journalist Toolbox. You can see these little vector graphics that I've created here. You know, there's several of them um, as I hover around here. I've got about half the home page is, uh, is these vector graphics. I'm working on, on building some more uh, as I go along here, eventually the whole page will probably be vector graphics that I've created in in uh, uh, in Mid Journey. Uh, they did have some updates with version six in late 2023 in vector graphics. I gave a few of those uh, uh, here. Um, some uh, you know ways you can stylize uh, and be able to make them a little more specific. Mine are pretty minimalistic, um, uh, which I think is a good clean design uh, way of handling it. Um, here I give you some basic prompts that'll work uh, for uh, creating a, a website uh, design. You can adjust the colors or you know, the type of website, a cooking website, donut website, gym and fitness website, sustainable living website. And these types of results you'll get. These are good base designs. You, know, you can always tweak them and regenerate them in mid-journey. Um, give you a few others here you know, for creating different types of you know, cartoons, editorial cartoons. Um, many different types of, of things uh, you can do uh, with uh, Mid Journey. So even some fun ones like some movie uh, prompts and things like that. Um, a prompt cheat sheet uh, at the bottom here and a few ethics and policies uh, to follow. So let's look at the role playing part we, we have here with you, you can have with your prompts. And you can do these in chat GPT, uh, Claude, uh, uh, Bard as well. Um, for this one, for example, you know, uh, you're a professor at, uh, you know, uh, with whatever topic, a professor in psychology, and I need to formulate some questions uh, to ask someone to get them to think about and put in your topic here. So assign it the role of a professor. We can do that as a journalist, too, you know, and uh, the one I showed you earlier, you know, I changed it to sports reporter here. Um, and I actually had to do this. Uh, I have an AI tools and resources website named journalstoolbox.ai. I need a description that will help me promote it. It gave me a pretty good result. Um, so let me take this one. I'll just plug it real quickly into, into uh, chat GPT uh, and, uh, you know, and we'll see how it turns out. Um, as you see, I've done a lot of different uh, queries up here. Um, I've also got uh, some uh, uh, chat GPT, uh, custom GPTs up here, they'll do different things for a currency converter and things like that, as well as some plugins up here uh, that I've covered in some other training videos. Um, but uh, if you go down here, uh, you can uh, click on your in G GPT-4, uh, click on your icon down in the lower left here uh, where, where your account uh, sits, and uh, you can go into where it says custom instructions. Um, and this is where I can program ChatGPT to tell it uh, how I would like, it, what, what I want it to know about me to provide uh, uh, better responses. And then how would you like ChatGPT to respond? So I tell ChatGPT, it gets to know me a little bit. I'm a journalist, college professor, and entrepreneur. I founded this website, Journalist Toolbox, and I write books. I know basic HTML and some other basic code. I live in Chicago, and I love the Chicago, Chicago Cubs. It hasn't factored in any of my answers yet. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, it's good to, good for it to know where I'm at. Um, I tell it to respond to me as an expert on certain topics. 
Uh, treat me as an expert uh, and academic on these topics. Treat me like a novice on these uh, topics. Math, data analysis, statistics, explain steps, steps simply to me. Um, so developing this for yourself, you know, keep a sense of humor in responses, be a little snarky. Um, I'll probably take that one out eventually, but you know, I just wanted to see, you know, if it, if it could understand humor. Um, and it can, and, you know, it's given me some pretty funny results sometimes, you know, I'm just messing around with it. Um, so, you know, be clear, be brief and orderly in responses, um, avoid opinions and try to be neutral. You know, it's, it's getting a little better at some of those types of things. So however you want to program yours, the custom instructions, again, are in the lower left under custom instructions when you click there. Um, so it's a good thing to have. Now, I'm going to drop in my little prompt here down at the bottom and ask it to give me the links. And we'll see how it does. I've had mixed results here. Um, it's actually using Scholar AI right now, which is a plugin. I could uh, turn my plugins off, um, but it's pulling scholarly research. But you know, I could have just turned that off and had uh, um, uh, uh, had uh, uh, regular chat GPT-4 answer it for me. Here's what's interesting. Remember in my little uh, uh, programming thing, I told it that I know HTML code. It's producing some of my results here, assuming that I'm going to take and just cut and paste this into my page, which I'm not. Um, it's it's putting HT, basic HTML code into uh, into its answers for me. So that's, you know, if I don't want that, that's something I could probably take out or tell it in the instructions, don't, don't mark up HTML in the answer. But it's kind of interesting that it now understands that that I know that programming. So it's writing it in that answer, in that program, which is kind of cool. Um, and it's given me, you know, some links here, some, uh, you know, links to some research and some of the uh, different resources. It looks like, you know, it's given me some interesting stuff, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, webliography. This is all academic research uh, on, uh, on uh, the topic. And you can see some links down here at the bottom uh, that you can go into and read about sports concussions. Um, so that's one example. Give it that role. Um, and again, you know, programmed in, in my answers, you know, yeah, HTML. That's why, why it's in there. I can go over here to BARD and try the same thing. Um, the, the cool thing about BARD is when they redesigned this back in uh, July of 20, late July of 2023, um, uh, it gives you some base prompts now to work with. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, create a thank you note or write Java code. You know, it, what they learned in the early days of BARD was that people were struggling to write prompts like this, like we're doing right now. And they had to go in and uh, uh, give some base prompts to give people an idea of what to write. Um, so, you know, I'll ask it to write me a, a little thank you note here, you know, which, you know, shouldn't be too hard to do. But if you're writing a, a thank you note to your boss, um, you know, I'm an entry level employee at a tech firm. Uh, you know, how do I write, you know, write a thank you note uh, uh, to my boss uh, uh, thanking him for a welcome gift or something like that, or a birthday gift, whatever. Um, you know, and uh, it says, it even tells me now to make it more personal activity, I need more details. So it's asking me to write more detail uh, and provide it. And then it just gave me a general format if I needed to just plug something in. But it's actually stopping me now and saying, hey, I need more detail than just this space prompt that you plopped in here. Um, so uh, I'll uh, drop in my... Uh, other prompt now and ask it, see how it does here. It shouldn't give me any HTML in my result like the other one um, did. So I'll let that cook for a while uh, and we'll get back to it in a minute. Oh, here it comes. Yeah, and it's giving me some links. National Institutes of Health. It's giving me a few others. It's kicking through here. JAMA, which is a good uh, medical journal. Um, it's pulling, you know, it's citing the results here. The early days of, of prompt writing, um, even if you asked for links, a lot of times they were just giving you, uh, you know, the answers and you had no idea where the answers came from. You know, here it gives you the citation, much like you'd see like in Google Scholar search or something like that. Um, but it just gives you five, you know, Google Scholar, you know, you're just getting this huge amount of information. Here it narrows it down. It's given me a pretty good result here. You know, these are some familiar publications. I've done a lot of writing on this topic. It's why I, I chose it here so I can kind of go through and evaluate them. 
Um, more prompt writing. Um, let, let's take a look at Claude and see what we've got here. Okay, again, Claude, you can upload documents. Um, I've had limited success with doing, uh, and I've done this with my uh, data journalism students. I've had to take a database and upload um, this bridge inspections database. I had them go through and ask it questions about the data. And it did pretty good with, you know, simple things like, you know, what five states have the most uh, bridges in fair condition or what five states have the most bridges in poor condition. But where it struggles is when you ask it to do rankings with it and do some mathematical uh, work, uh, like add these two columns together and find the average. Um, that's when it starts to struggle. And it was giving us some hallucination results. We experiment with this every semester where we uh, do it with a spreadsheet to get the answer. And then we try to uh, with Claude and we've actually got the exercise in here that, uh, you know, if you wanted to do it, uh, you could. Um, uh, it's good at creating uh, uh, code. Um, yeah, it's one of the things Claude does uh, uh, very, very well. Um, uh, you can ask it to uh, check uh, AP style, um, fix spelling um, uh, and grammar um, as well. And I'll ask it here. I'll rewrite this prompt a little bit for you. Um, I'll say list all of the edits in a bullet point list. The end. So I've got this prompt and then I've got this little story here that has a bunch of AP style and you know various punctuation and, and spelling errors. I'll add a couple more in here for you. Um, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it does. A few more errors in here. Um, so let's take this with the prompt. We'll drop it into claw. Kick me out. <laughs> this is good. Yeah, you know, I'm just kind of watching through the login process and you get a chance here to kind of see A to Z what you have to do. Um, Anthropic uh, has done a really nice job of, uh, you know, building out and doing some of the things that uh, ChatGPT doesn't do. Um, and, uh, you know, it, uh, you know, it was a brother and sister team that started Anthropic and, uh, they broke off from open AI. They're originally with them. Uh, so, you know, they've kind of broken off and done their own thing. Uh, very easy here. It's got the little, uh, paper clip you can attach just like in Bard, um, uh, on the left hand, uh, Bard it's over here on the left. Uh, you can, uh, attach a document, PDF, text file, CSV spreadsheet, um, you know, it's a, a, a maximum of five documents at a time. Uh, you can take up to 10 megabytes each, about 75,000 words in a document uh, you can handle. Um, so I'll drop in my story and my prompt. And I could have done this as a document and uploaded it. I just loaded it in with a prompt. Okay, it's going through, it's making the changes. It's catching things like, you know, I had spelled out $240,000. Uh, let's see if it caught, you know, spelled out three instead of the number. And it's listing all of the changes it made here. And so this got the spelling changes as well. Um, did a pretty good job. Uh, if it didn't, um, I could go in and ask it, you know, look for more edits in that copy. Uh, and then uh, asked it to do that. Um, I can copy it here and then paste it into my uh, story. Um, now, it may depend on your publication. I, I would probably say, you know, this uh, story was edited using uh, open uh, or uh, using Claude, or uh, you could just say artificial intelligence helped with the editing process. Uh, so always disclose that, uh, you know, to the reader. Um, so one more thing uh, before we uh, uh, let you go here, um, I'm going to go to mid-journey. Um, and just show you some of these prompts that you can drop in here. And, and uh, you know, it'll, it'll do some really, really uh, cool stuff. Um, this is one, it's asking for a PNG file with a white background and a woman listening to music, sitting at the desk with her laptop in the style of animated illustrations, uh, you know, working in a study place, uh, full body meaning head to toe. Uh, and the style is, is, I want it to be kind of a raw looking uh, graphic. Uh, my results will show up here. As you can see, I've done a, a lot of them, uh, kind of uh, different types of uh, 
you know, food, uh, it's good for food journalism, for staging different uh, you know, types of things. I've used it some in web design, um, car animations, you know, I take cars and, and then drop them into, create the images here and drop them into uh, uh, various uh, 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 animation programs. Um, I've had some fun, you know, this is one of my early ones, Trump fleeing the police. Uh, Midjourney set version six is very good. Uh, it's, uh, you know, very hard to tell anymore. Uh, whether or not uh, something is real or or not, uh, you hear I've got Godzilla uh, charging the Chicago skyline coming out of Lake Michigan. Um, so I'm going to drop Imagine in here. I'm doing this out of Discord. Uh, future versions of uh, Mid Journey uh, will do away with having to to work on them in in uh, Discord. Um, you can now go to uh, you'll be able to do this coming. It says coming soon up here. Um, you'll be able to actually create in mid-journey in, in your browser, which will be great. You won't have to go to Discord to do it. Not that it's a big problem, but, um, you know, it's pretty cool. You always do slash imagine and then hit return and, and or hit the space bar. Uh, and you can uh, uh, drop in your font uh, and it'll uh, or your prompt and then uh, away you go. Uh, and it's starting to create my, my four different uh, designs here. Um, we'll see how multi-ethnic it is. It tends to, it's getting a little better at this. Uh, you know, early on, I had to be very specific that I wanted multi-ethnic results. And it looks like it's doing a little better, um, uh, you know, with people of color. But otherwise, it'll it'll give you white people every time. Uh, that's because, you know, uh, there's a lot of biases uh, in, in AI. And you have to be very specific in your prompts to ask what you want. Um, so here we go. You know, pretty good, diverse uh, group. Uh, uh, you know, this one's in lower rights, probably a little more minimalistic. Uh, but you can even see with the even with these simple prompts, you know, how good the details becoming in these two on the left. Wow. You know, just really nice job. This uh, one in the lower left hand corner is just beautiful. Um, really nice uh, work here. And I can upscale that by hitting U3. It goes one, two, three, and four. One, two goes across, three, and four go across. So I'm going to ask it to upscale this, and then you know, I can obviously send it to the web. It might give me an error here since I should probably log back in. But nope, it went through. It's now in mid-journey. It kicked it back over to mid-journey, and I can download it here. Um, it gives me the prompt. So it archives my prompt for me, which is great. And I can copy it if I need to go back and use it again. Um, it's also searchable now in here, so people can search for these images. Um, you know, just remember, um, unless you have a privacy setting on it, that it is, uh, you know, public domain. So, um, again, uh, you know, take advantage of these resources. Uh, you know, these there's, you know, I think uh, nine uh, AI prompt exercises, and then I've got several mid-journey prompts underneath that that you can use uh, really in any tool. Dolly, they work pretty well. Um, you know, Adobe Firefly, some of these others. Um, but again, our handout is bit.ly uh, prompts 101. Uh, and take advantage of that and follow those steps that I gave you in the earlier uh, steps here with, uh, you know, the uh, uh, training uh, deck here. Uh, and be sure to use the tools at journalisttoolbox.ai. Uh, free resources, really easy to use. Uh, so take advantage of it. Um, and we'll see you on the next training video. Thanks.